What up, what up, Mr. Hip Hop Vegan coming with another video. And today what I want to talk about is the devilish music industry. A lot of people like to talk about culture vultures. Like when white people get into the music industry, especially hip hop, they usually shunned or talked about and let's just let's say a Vlad TV, let's say an Eminem or whatever. They would say the reason why they're in the position that they're in is because they're white. Blah, 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 blah. The real culture vultures are the people who look like you and take advantage of you. A uh, Irv Gotti, a, a Puffy, a uh, Suge Knight, a... Those people. I forgot the other guy's name. <laughs> the, guy, the guy from Def Jam. You know who he is. They take the blueprint... Let's say somebody like Irv Gotti. I think his mentor was Liar Cohen. Liar Cohen. I think that was his mentor. So what he used to do is uh, is a, a producer. I think his name was um, Self Service. Self Service, the producer. He did a lot of stuff. He did Bone Thugs and Harmony. He did uh, he did uh, Onyx. He did um, uh, who else? Uh, DMX and stuff like that. Self Service. I know if you look him up or whatever. So what Irv Gotti did was, he he would put his name, like he's the one who produced the music. And now he gets publishing for that. You know, the artists get their cut. Let's say you start from 100, the artists get their cut, the writer gets their cut, the producer get their cut. And even though Irv Gotti didn't do anything to the music, he gets his cut. So in this instance, let's say 50% goes to the artist, 50%, you know, mostly go to the artist and the writer, and then the other 50% goes to the producer. Uh, so what happens is this guy named Self Service, he said he gets 25% of his publishing, and then Irv Gotti gets 25% of the publishing. Now, that's a person that looks like him. He grew up with him. Self Service said that he played uh, chess with Irv Gotti's dad. And then you think about it, it's like, so they take the blueprint to to take advantage of the same, the same people that look like them, and then years down the road, they want to say, oh, we're black owned, we're, we're, you know, we're black music industry, come over here, but they'll take advantage of you no matter what. They'll use that same blueprint that the people who created the, the, uh, the, the system, they'll use that same blueprint. Same thing with Puff Daddy. I don't even think he touched the keyboard in his life. And if he did, he did. He might have been the one, like, a. Uh, like uh, the person putting people together and stuff like that. But I don't think he made beats. Dre did the same thing. But I don't know how Dr. Dre, you know, made his contracts or whatever. But most of the time, uh, other people at towards the end, like Scott Storch did beats and stuff like that. And I guess since you're working underneath Dre, uh, they'll just put the credit like he did it. And to do that, I mean, isn't that kind of uh, oxymoronic? And then... I bet you these are the same people who will come out and be like, black empowerment, black this, and, and, and stuff like that. And you can get mad at me all you want, but it's right there, right in front of your face. They'll be the same people talking this and that, and then the same people who's robbing their homies. As you can see, anything from Bad Boy doesn't come out good. So, once again, look up the, the producer's self-service. He was on a Math Hoffa interview a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, talking about his his relationship and stuff like that. It's two sides to every story, but when you hear the same story coming out from multiple people, then it is what it is. So just wanted to make a quick video. Thank you for watching my video. Um, at the end of the day, it's gonna be somebody who look like you is gonna hurt you the most. It is it's what it is. Peace.